Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. My name is Alicia. Some people call me Dr. Ramora, and we're going to be going on an adventure today to learn more about some of the most fascinating animals in the ocean. Are you ready to learn about sharks? Excellent! Now, I'm not alone in my studio. I have some friends here to help me. I have Miss Stacy, who's bringing up all the images behind me, and I have our friend Dave, who is helping with all of our questions. So, if you would like to share some of your shark drawings, we're going to be drawing sharks today, uh, you can text us in if you have questions, if you um, have answers to some of the questions that I have, feel free to text in 562-286-1838. Just remember um, for our kids out there to make sure that you have permission from an adult. Normal texting rates do apply. Now, if you are watching after the show is live, you can always email us in. I have an email address here at live at lbaop.org. And our education staff will be happy to answer questions um, or if you wanted to email in some of your artwork. Now, scientists use art all the time. They use art to help them make observations, to create models, to explore. So as we investigate sharks today, we're going to be drawing a little bit. We're going to be first making some observations. And when I say an observation, I mean looking closely. We're going to be looking for shapes, colors noticing different sizes. Is there anything interesting about a shark? Well, of course, there's lots of interesting things and we're gonna try to record those interesting things. Now, we are uh, viewing our Shark Lagoon habitat. So there's a lot of different sharks in here. And to help us with our kind of explaining what makes a shark a shark, what are some of those common things even though there are lots of different sharks in here that they might all have, we're going to be drawing our shark. So if you do happen to have a piece of paper and something to, to sketch in, we'd love to, to see your work so you can draw along with me. All right, so before we start drawing our shark to see if we know some of those shark parts, let's see if we notice anything. Now, if you'd like to text in, you can start texting in some of your observations. What do you notice about our shark friends here? Hmm, are they all the same? Do they have any parts that are the same? So this, this animal back here, we're gonna be learning about a little bit later. And by the way, I have called my friend Sharky, who's gonna be joining us a little bit to help us do some exploring. So we have, ooh, here's one of our, oh, <laughs> an up close. Oh, good comparison. Look, there's a gray reef shark and a black tip reef shark. They have a very similar body shape. How would you describe that body shape? Now it's okay, if you don't have a chance to text in, you can always shout it out loud, you can write down your notes, you can tell a pet, you can tell a family member, however you would like to share with us today. So you probably have noticed that their bodies aren't like our bodies, right? They have a special shape to that main part of their body, and that is called a fusiform shape. It is kind of like a football, there we go, or an oval that's been pulled with two pointy sides. Now this shape is used by many animals in the ocean, not just sharks. And so some sharks have a really fusiform shape. Some of them are a little bit more squished because they live closer to the bottom. But this shape is also used by orca whales. If you think about a penguin swimming through the water, they have different parts besides the shark's uh, fins and such, but they do have a body shape that's really similar. Oh, Oliver, we already have a question coming in. Thanks, Oliver, for watching and asking questions. Oliver asked, do sharks have meal times? You know, the sharks at the Aquarium of the Pacific do have meal times. They love to have their lunch around 2 o'clock, the ones that are... Um, swimming around behind me. So at two o'clock every day, they know that they get nice fish that's fed from the very top of the water and they each have a place that is their place to eat. So some of the, the sharks might eat over here, some of them might eat over here, and our animal care staff called our husbandry department, they uh, prepare all that food and they get to know what that shark likes and what kind of food that they are supposed to eat to, to make sure they're nice and healthy. Okay, do you have your paper and your drawing utensil? 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and go over to my camera and we're gonna start drawing our shark out to help us explore a little bit more about what we see on our shark. So I'm gonna walk over there. Okay, so here's my whiteboard that I'm gonna be using. And we're gonna start with that shape that we just talked about. Now, I'm not an artist, but I do like to draw, so you don't have to be perfect. You can, you'll see with my drawing that as long as you're just recording what you see, that's perfect. And your, and your drawing doesn't have to be like my drawing. All right, so we've made that fusiform shape. We have the body. What other parts do we need to make this a shark? Now I have my, my plush shark here, and my plush shark has that fusiform shape, kind of like a lemon. What makes it a shark? What other parts do you see? So if you want to text those parts in, go for it. If you want to just shout them out or even start drawing them. Did you notice? Well, let's start with those fins. Maybe we'll go back to our web camera and take a look and see how many fins that we see and how they're using their fins. Hmm. So I notice that they have fins. Let's see. Oh, they have fins on the top. Here's going to be a shark coming back. They have how many? One, two. They have two of these fins. And those are called their dorsal fins because this is our dorsal side or our back side. And so this is the back side of the shark. And so they have these two fins on the top. And they also have a couple fins on the bottom. And that really helps make sure that they're not wobbly when they swim. Now they also have, wow, that's a great, if you look at that tail, how's that tail moving? How would you describe that to a friend? Hmm, is it? moving up and down? Or is it moving side to side? Yeah, you probably noticed it's moving side to side. And that's how a shark really pushes itself through the water, moving it side to side as it, as it kind of glides really gracefully. So it has that tail or what we call a caudal fin on the back. And then it also has, they have these side fins. Oh, thank you, zebra shark. What a nice model for our drawing. And you can see that the, the zebra shark isn't flapping around, right? It's not moving like this through the water. That would be kind of silly. We think of sharks as so graceful. We wouldn't think of a shark going, here, fishy, fishy, I'm coming for you. Um, the sharks instead are kind of gliding. Wow, they're all gathering. They must really want to be on camera for a, our class today. They're kind of like, to me, they almost look like airplanes. And they're using those side fins to help them steer. You can kind of see that as we're watching them. So that back fin to push, those side fins for gliding. Let's go ahead and add those fins to our drawing here to make sure that we have everything. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my top, what we call those dorsal fins. So I have a one, I have two, I have my fins underneath, one, two. I have my tail fin that comes out. Kind of a, almost like a crescent moon shape and they can be different. You, you saw that the zebra shark had a really long tail. So you can add a longer tail if you want. You can add a tail that um, is a little bit more pointed. It really kind of depends on the shark that you uh, want to draw. And then we have these nice pectoral fins on the side. Ta-da! Excellent! So we have the two on the side. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and there'd actually be another one in the back here. So they usually have those seven fins on there, and then they have their tail fin. Okay, so we have a nice a nice little lemon-shaped animal. What am, I, what am I missing? Now, as we look at our shark cameras, and maybe you can start um, thinking about what we should add next, I'm gonna answer some questions for you here. All right, so um, from Easton, Easton asks, how many different sharks are there in the Shark Lagoon um, exhibit here? Oh, that's a good question. 
So maybe we can try to figure that out together. Do you see that we have a sleeping sea turtle as well? <laughs> so, you know, I'm not sure. Um, we have three different types in here, but I'm not sure how many total that we have in this exhibit. Yeah, I think we have about six sharks total here. And I think we were counting through the aquarium. We have around 12 or 13 different kinds um, around the aquarium. So this is just one home for our animals. We have lots of different homes. And in some of our other homes, we have sharks as well. And that's a really fun thing to look at because, you know, sharks are found in so many different places around the planet and they can be in the deep, deep ocean. They can be in the really warm tropical lagoons like our bamboo sharks. That's a great question. That means that you've been making some observations. Maybe, um, oh, there we go. Stacy's reading my mind. So we have that bonnethead. There's another example. So this is another home or habitat here at the aquarium. And then we also have their cousins. They're kind of like flattened out sharks. These are uh, the, the rays, we have, I like the spotted eagle rays. We'll see if we can find any. We have a mangrove ray that's swimming by. Ooh, there's lots of activity. I'm wondering if it might be um, time for a diver to come in and feed soon. The fish tend to know when, <laughs> when snack time is. Do you get as excited as I do about snack time? Yeah, our fish do too. All right, Sophia asked how many species of shark at the aquarium? Oh, yeah. You were right on the, the topic, Sophia. So uh, we, are, we are counting about uh, 13 different kinds here at the aquarium. And then uh, the question is, do we have white tip reef sharks? We no longer have white tip reef sharks. They went to go live at another aquarium, but we did have white tip reef sharks um, for a while. So you might see some of those pictures on our website from a little bit farther back in time. So we do sometimes, um, move animals for different facilities. And that allows us to kind of switch up uh, what animals that we have in our collection. Now we're friends with lots of other aquariums that allows us to do that. And so they have nice homes at other places as well. And then um, Jovi asked, do sharks eat sheephead fish? Oh, that's a great question. So again, we are thinking about different habitats. The sheephead is found in much colder water, and I am sure that there are bigger sharks out there. Probably needs a bigger shark, uh, maybe even like a white shark, a white tip reef, uh, sorry, great white shark <laughs> to eat a, a fish that big. So sheephead can get pretty large, and they do have a nice set of teeth on them. So I would say that um, unless they're much, unless they were eaten when they're much smaller. Um, there's not much that are going to eat them when they're big, but they can still be preyed upon by larger sharks. And so here is, oh, look, there's a barracuda. Pretty fun. So the sheephead, um, who is not making an appearance, and that's okay. We can check back later if we have time. Um, it sounds like you've been watching. Maybe you know a little bit about the sheephead. The sheephead likes to take a nap here. And you're always welcome, uh, explorers, to come back and take a look at our webcams and see if you can find it. It has a nice uh, big pink stripe down its body. It's really fun. Ah, look right here. <laughs> if you were playing our I spy game earlier, I think our <laughs> sheep head. Oh, there's the male and there's the female. So you see, that's a pretty large fish. The fish can get pretty big and it has a, um, a nice set of teeth on it. Ooh, good question. So yeah, they are, um, I'm sure that there is a bigger fish, like sharks, that could definitely eat them, but it'd have to be a pretty big shark. All right. Now, speaking of, we are exploring sharks, and sharks are fish. In order to be a fish, you have to be able to breathe underwater using gills. And so they are related to fish like this, the Garibaldi. They look different though, right? They don't have that kind of flap that goes over their gills right here. They have what we call gill slits. And most sharks have five gill slits. These are opening, so the water goes through their mouth and then it goes over their gills to help them take the oxygen from the water. And so we're gonna go ahead and add in these five gill slits. Now, my, even my plush here, you might say, oh, three, 
And that's because there's a lot of stuffed animals and cartoons and even books that I've seen that have these three. And that's okay if you thought that they had those three, but just so you know, most sharks have uh, at least five. There are sharks that have six or even seven gill slits on the side. So let's make sure that our shark can breathe. So I'm gonna go and add one, two, three, four, five on here. Ta-da! Now in order to get that water through it, its body, it needs to have a mouth. So I'm gonna also include a mouth. I'm gonna make mine a smiley shark. It's happy to be part of our program today. Ta-da! So that water is gonna go through here and then over the gills. Now, we saw a lot of sharks out there and they need to be able to sense their environment so they can get information about where they're swimming using their sense of sight so they can see. So we'll make sure you add an eye for your shark. They can get a sense through taste. They have little tongues, believe it or not. They can touch um, and they can also smell and hear. We can't see their ears. I think it'd be funny if they had, you know, like, big bunny ears on the side of their body. They don't, they don't have those. Their ears are inside and that's their best sense. So they have a little nose called a nair. And they even have the ability to sense electricity, which is really cool. But they have to do that really close and they have these little dots on the end of their nose that help them do that. All right, so you're probably thinking, well, most sharks when they smile, not all, but most sharks have a have nice teeth inside their mouth. So, you know, sharks eat many different things and not all of them have the same kind of teeth. We're gonna take a look at that a little bit later. But for our white shark that we've been drawing, our great white shark, they have, let's see if we can put up that great white shark photo again, Miss Stacy. They have nice pointed teeth inside their mouth. They have triangle shaped teeth. So I'm going to include those triangle shaped teeth. But just so you know, not all sharks have triangle shaped teeth. Even the, the ray, the ray has flat teeth in its mouth. They're cousins. Okay, so let's go ahead. You can add some teeth in there. I'm going to add these little triangle shapes. And the other place I'm going to add teeth is all over their body. Yay! You're probably thinking, why? Why are you doing that? Well, sharks are pretty cool. They're fish, so they have scales, but their scales are awesome. They have scales that are made of the same stuff as teeth. In fact, that's how they get their name. These special scales are called dermal denticles or skin teeth. Isn't that cool? So if you've ever visited our aquarium in the past and you've had a chance to pet some of our sharks, you may have felt how bumpy, or maybe you've heard how bumpy shark skin is. And that's because up close, they have these tiny little scales made of the same thing as teeth. Crazy. All right, so I think we're all done with our shark. We've added those basic things. You're welcome to um, text in a photo if you wanted to share your shark photo, or if you had any more questions about sharks. Uh, we are going to visit um, with my friend Sharky. So I had mentioned earlier that we had invited a shark expert to help us. So let's go ahead and call Sharky and see if he can help us with our explorations today. Hi everyone. Hi Sharky. My name is Sharky. How are you today? I work here at the aquarium. Today, I was going to go on an adventure to see if I can learn more about sharks. Hey, yes, would you Sharky? like to join me on my adventure? All right, well, great. Awesome, thank you, Sharky. All right. <laughs> Sharky is so excited. Been around for over 400 million years. That is way back, even before dinosaurs were around. Over time, sharks have become one of the most popular hunters in the ocean. Sharks come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Some are shaped like footballs, while others are as flat as a pancake. Some sharks are as small as your hand, and others are as big as a bus. Dr. Ramora, do you have anything in your classroom to show the students just how large and small these sharks can actually be? 
Yes, Sharky, we're going to do our shark sizes Great. activity. Great! While you teach the kids about sizes, I'm going to swim off to Shark Lagoon. Meet me there later. All right, bye, Sharky. <laughs> okay, isn't that amazing? Sharks have been around for over 450 million years. They're so cool, and that's part of the story of why there are so many different types, and they live in so many places around the planet. All right, we've had a couple more questions before we do our, our shark sizes. Moshi'ib uh, had asked, um, how do sharks go to the bathroom? Well, that's a good question, right? Animals eat food and they have to go to the bathroom. They have one place called a cloaca, like many other fish, and that is a way for that for them to use the bathroom. So that is by their tail fin, it's underneath their body, and that is a place where they um, they go to the bathroom. And then um, Moshi also asked, do sharks crossbreed? That is a really good question. To my understanding, I'm not sure if we've, we have discovered any sharks that have um, crossbred, but that is a really good science question. I wonder if that's something that you can explore maybe um, if you decide to go into marine biology. Wouldn't that be exciting? So uh, those are the types of questions that I'm sure other scientists are very excited to explore. And then uh, Brett had asked, how many gills do sharks have? Oh, that was a great question. I hope that you were um, excited to learn about that while we were drawing. So again, just as a recap, sharks have those five gill openings. There are some sharks like the six gilled shark that have six and a seven gilled shark that have seven, go figure. So there are other sharks out there that have more. And then, uh, oh, was the Megalodon real? That is a great question. In fact, um, I like that we have the picture of a great white shark up. So a Megalodon is an ancient shark that used to be around millions of years ago. And it was, uh, they believe, pretty much like the great white shark, but just much bigger. And so, for example, I'm going to go over to my document cam. I think I have a model of a Megalodon tooth to kind of give you a size comparison. So... I have, oh, you know what? I'm just going to stand so you can kind of see. So this is, a, this is a model of a great white shark tooth. And then in comparison, <laughs> this is a megalodon tooth. Isn't that incredible? Now, the megalodon was eating much bigger prey because millions of years ago, the animals that lived in the ocean were much bigger. Now, our animals that we have here in our oceans are much smaller. And so the great white shark is much smaller than the megalodon. And sharks, their skeleton isn't the same as ours or other fish. Instead of having a skeleton of bone, they have it of cartilage. So when paleontologists, when explorers are trying to kind of understand how big the megalodon was, it's kind of hard because cartilage, which is the same stuff that's in your nose and your ears, it doesn't last through time like bone. So what does last are their teeth. So they have a pretty good estimate based on teeth, but it's a little harder with sizes because, again, over millions of years, that cartilage doesn't last as long as bone. So it's a little harder to figure out um, exactly how big the megalodon was, but they have some pretty good guesses. And then Sophia asked, how many teeth do sharks have? Oh, that's a great question question. We're going to take a look up close at some shark jaws, but they can have hundreds at a time and they can have multiple rows. And they guess that sharks are always kind of growing and losing their teeth. So some, sh some sharks they estimate can grow and lose about 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. Isn't that amazing? That's a lot of money from the tooth fairy. And then Easton had asked, what is the common color of sharks? Oh, that is a great question. So we've been looking at a lot of sharks are kind of in that gray color, and that's to help them really blend into their habitat. But there are some sharks that we're gonna explore that instead of swimming around kind of open like this in the open water, they like to hide at the bottom. So they might have those same kind of gray or brown patterns, 
but um, instead of being one solid color, some of them have polka dots. This is actually a great uh, transition to the sizes um, activity that I wanted to do with you. So Sharky had said uh, we should be exploring shark sizes. So the first animal we're looking at, these are bamboo sharks, and bamboo sharks are about three to three and a half feet. How big is that? Well, if you stick your hands out in a big V like this, all the way out. This is about three feet, about three feet. So if you hold your, your arms out like this. So we'll kind of use this as our starting point right here. And this is about how long a bamboo shark can grow. And that's pretty big. For um, three, three and a half feet is pretty big. A lot of bamboo sharks only get to be anywhere from two to two to two and a half feet. So you're talking about a big bamboo shark. And these bamboo sharks, they like to live at the bottom. They have, I'm glad you asked about colors. They have colors that help them camouflage at the bottom. And they live in these really shallow lagoons where their food is all the way at the bottom. So their mouths are all the way underneath. And you can see that their bodies are a little bit more stretched out. They're not as uh, lemon shaped as some of the other sharks. So again, those shapes can be a little bit different. They even have these little things that hang from their mouth called barbels that help them uh, check the sand for food, kind of like tasting in the sand, which is pretty cool, or smelling in the sand. So this is the bamboo shark. Now, the cool thing about the bamboo shark is it is the most common size, or I would say more than half of all sharks are about this size. Can you imagine? So if you swim in the ocean and you see a shark, most likely it's going to be about this big. Let's take a look at another type of shark. This one we've been exploring in our webcams. So this is a black tip reef shark, and the black tip reef shark is twice the size of a bam. Oh, is twice the size of a black tip reef shark. So that's if we were to say uh, two of those. So if you made your V again, you can just kind of measure out one and two. Pretty cool. So that is about the size of our black tip reef shark. Let's go to our next shark and take a look. <gasps> Ooh, this is our sand tiger shark. So the sand tiger shark has long pointed teeth and those long pointed teeth are up front to help it gra grab its food in front of it. So it's catching things not in the sand, but are a little bit faster in front. And the sand tiger shark is three times the bamboo shark. You want to try it? You ready? Okay, so you make your V, bring it down. So we go one, two, and three. That's pretty big. You lost me. We're off screen. <laughs> All right. So we've, this is, uh, by the way, this is big guy that we have here at the aquarium. Now we're going to take a look at a bigger shark. We're not going to measure this shark. We've been talking about the great white shark, which I love because it always looks like they're smiling. I love that they have a cute looks like a nose on their body. Now this one is much bigger. Maybe an adult later can help you measure out this, the size of the largest great white ever recorded was about 22 feet. That's pretty big. So this is a, a much larger animal. Most of them get to be around 15 to 18 feet though. They don't get to be around that 20 foot range, but that's really big. But this isn't the largest shark that we have in our ocean. Let's take a look at my absolute favorite shark in the ocean. Ta-da! The whale shark! And the whale shark is also too big for us to measure out in your living rooms or your homes today. But I want you to imagine it with me. I think we have um, something that might help you imagine with me. We have a giant bus. They're bigger than a bus. And then a car. And then half a car. Can you imagine? And we were talking about colors. This whale shark doesn't live at the bottom, but it likes to eat little tiny plankton in the ocean. And it has these nice polka dots to help it kind of blend in to the light coming through at the surface. So they like to feed near the surface of the water. They're not pretty deep diving sharks. So they have this nice color pattern on the very top of their body. And that, that, those little dots can be unique to the shark. So not so the little pattern up here is different for every whale shark and they can be identified by those little polka dots, which I think is pretty cool. 
All right, let's go ahead and um, hear from Sharky, and then we're gonna go ahead and answer some questions that have come in. Hello, everyone. Look who I ran into. This here is Steve Blair. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm an aquarist at the aquarium. In Aquadalua Hallehu? An aquarist. That means I take care of the animals. I'm in charge of feeding them, treating them for diseases, and watching the exhibits. Today I'm feeding Shark Lagoon. Wow, what a great job. It looks like there are a lot of mouths to feed here, Steve. Just how many sharks are there? There's about 150 bamboo sharks in the large touch pool to Shark Lagoon. 150? What do all the sharks like to eat? Well, sharks are hunters. Today I'm feeding them squid. Squid? Ooh, gross. Do all sharks eat the same kind of food? No, you should know that, Sharky. Sharks have different kinds of teeth to eat different kinds of food. Wow, that sure is a lot of different teeth, Steve. Oh, I heard that the scuba divers get to dive in. Aren't they excited to swim with the sharks? That is a great question, Dr. Remora. I will go ask them. Meet me up in the dive locker. Bye, Steve. All right, bye, bye. thanks, Sharky. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and answer a few questions that have um, come up. Mrs. Gomez's class is watching together and they're first graders from Grandview. Hello, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining our Sharky's Adventure today. And then a question um, that has come through, why do great white sharks have gray on the top and white on their bellies? That is a great observation, good job. So that pattern, which is really common to be very dark on the top and light on the bottom is called countershading. And that is a special kind of camouflage. Penguins have that, orca whales have that, Hey, we were talking about their shapes being the same too. So there are a lot of sharks and other fish that are dark on the top and light on the bottom. And what this does, I'll grab my plush animal again to help us. If you were a fish and you were hiding, um, you might want to be lighter on the bottom or if you were hunting even. So being light, when you're looking up, the light is streaming down from the sun into the water. And so being a little bit lighter helps you camouflage because it's light when you look up. And then when you look down, it's darker. So having the dark top helps you blend in. So that's called counter shading. There are even animals out there who do this using light. Animals in the deep sea, they have special uh, ways to help them glow and they will be lighter on the bottom than they will be on the top, which is pretty cool. And then uh, Sloan asks, what color are their tongues? You know what? That's a good question. I'm not sure if they are pink like ours. Um, Dave, do you know what color? Pinkish whitish. So I haven't really asked one to stick its tongue out for me, but we're guessing it's gonna be kind of a pink color. That's a great question. And then uh, Jove asks, where do bamboo sharks live in the ocean? That's a great question. So again, those little bamboo sharks, which are adorable, they like to live in these nice uh, warm locations around the planet, around the equator. And they love those shallower areas because there's lots of those tasty animals that they can eat. So they have mouths to help them crunch up things like shrimp and snails and little crabs that they can find, even little um, worms that are hiding in the sand. So anything that they, it's small, they can kind of munch up in the sand is something that they're going to try to find. And then Daniel and Max asked, what happened to the Megalodon? That's a great question. So they think that the Megalodon uh, went extinct um, because maybe it ran out of food as things changed in the ocean. But the Megalodon, as far as we know, has um, been one of those animals that has gone extinct. So uh, it is a pretty awesome animal to learn about though, right? Especially if it, you saw those different teeth and how big it used to be. Can you imagine it hunting those big animals in the ocean? I think that's pretty cool. And then Luke um, had asked, what is, uh, was the Megalodon related to the great white shark? And so I had mentioned the white shark that we were looking at. And although there are predictions that the Megalodon and the white shark are related, they're still learning. They're not quite sure. But that is one of the predictions out there that scientists are uh, further exploring. Maybe you can further explore that. Oh, we have a shout out to a first grade class. 
Golden? Golden Elementary School. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been fun. I hope you're excited to learn about sharks. I hope you ha this has inspired you to uh, learn a little bit more. We've only talked about a, a tiny portion of sharks out there, and there is just so much more to learn. Now, I think we have a call from Sharky who's telling us um, that, oh, what was that, Miss Stacy? <gasps> The scuba divers do love swimming in with our sharks. Thank you for sharing that. So we had said that Sharky was gonna go up to the dive locker and take a look or talk to our divers. And it sounds like they love swimming with our sharks. In fact, they will swim in here with our sharks when the, the um, home needs to be cleaned out. They will swim in that big tropical habitat that we were in and they're swimming all around with the sharks. So it sounds like our scuba divers and our aquarists love to be in the water with our sharks just as much as we've been loving to watch them. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed watching all about our sharks today. And again, if you'd like to share your shark photos with us, you can text those in. Thank you so much everyone for joining us for our online academy. We have a few more classes uh, today and we have classes the rest of the week. Take care. Thank you, everyone.